All right, so let's uh, try to tackle a couple of these uh, comments here. Uh, my last video, what if I deny Jesus? And um, so I, I just simply explain that um, people that deny Jesus here in, oh, where was that at? Let's find it real quickly. Um, Matthew 10. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. So, um, what this simply means is those that deny Jesus are those that are not saved. Okay? This does not mean you will lose your salvation. And I simply point out that Peter denied Jesus three times, and um, he never lost his salvation, right? And this is, I mean, you should, if you don't know this about Peter, I don't think you know anything about the Bible at all. So, um, just to uh, hammer this point home, um, let's go to um, John 17 Jesus says while I was with them in the world I kept them in my name those that thou gavest me I have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled the son of perdition here is Judas Iscariot so of them that he was with while he was in the world, among them was Peter. And Peter never lost his salvation. He was never, I mean, he was, he was lost until he was found, right? I mean, but he never lost his salvation. Just because he denied Jesus does not mean he lost his salvation. It's not possible to lose your salvation. If it's possible to lose your salvation, you could never be saved. The point of being saved is being saved. It's illogical to say you could lose your salvation and be saved at the same time. Okay, so that was that. Just, uh, I guess, a quick summary. And so, at MC Scorpio says if you deny Jesus you deny the son s u n all right and so i don't know if there's anything i can i if that's a if that's not a misprint i don't know what to tell you buddy all right i guess if i could help at all i'd like to help everybody really um i don't think that's the one i'm looking for is it They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them into living water, living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now this is in the resurrection. This is when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ shall rise up. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them. And we shall be forever changed. Our enemy below will be destroyed forever. All sin and all death and all these things of the world will be destroyed forever. And will be set down on a new earth with new heavens so there will be no longer a need for the sun not it's the light we won't need the light for the Lord our God will be our light and nor for heat right all right so anyways uh, so I'm not sure uh, you know if that was a misprint or utterly confused about the whole thing but hopefully I can help a little bit give you something to think about thank you BRL denying the Bible is talking about is a life 
style contrary to God's law, not what Peter did. Study your Bible, don't read it. No, well, <laughs> study your Bible, don't read it. Now, how can you study the Bible and not read it? Okay, so let's do real quick here. Um, if we do, this probably ain't going to work because this is going to give us ready. How do I... How do I find just read? Uh, I think there's a way and I don't remember how to do it. Uh, it doesn't matter, does it? No, let's not dwell on that. So let's go. Let's go this way. Let's do it this way. Okay, so <clears throat> studieth, studieth, study, studs, study, study. So only five of those are referring to the word studieth. And the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. All right, okay, very cool. Now look at Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12, and further by these, my son, S-O-N, be admonished of making many books there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. So that would be in a negative uh, tone, if you will, in a negative context, but it doesn't matter. And this is completely something uh, separate. But, you know, we should study. There's no, I'm not saying you shouldn't study, right? But I do want to make the point that we have to read a lot more than we study. All right. And... You see here, I talk, this talks about reading, right? And um, you know, it's how I just don't know how you could study without reading. If if you study without reading, you're gonna you're gonna get deceived, guaranteed, because you're depending on <clears throat> teachers to tell you the meaning in the context of each. Uh, place in the Bible that you're studying. It just doesn't make any sense. I read every morning and then I, I'll study throughout you know the day whether it's you know depending on the day but um, at you know in particular at night so and then these questions that that people or these comments that these people here are giving me and then of course um, the com in the comment section, or uh, then the thing up here when you, when I respond to other people's videos, and you know, for example, uh, somebody's trying to tell me in the Revelation six, uh, talking about the Antichrist. All right, give you one example. Okay, and I saw and behold a white horse here. Let, I'll just make a video about this. That's Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna do a separate video on it. Anyways. Study to show thyself approved for sure, but you've got to read before you study. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't read, it's not going to do you any good to study, really. So first, you got to read, and you ought to read every day, right? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And in Matthew six, when it says. Give us this day our daily bread. This is talking about reading the Word of God every day. Every day. Give us this day our daily bread. The daily bread is the Word of God. All right. And you can do a study on that too. But how can you do a study if you have not read? And of course, how can you have faith? Um. What is that for? What is that verse here? Faith, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And how can you hear the word of God if you've never? It, it all starts with the word of God. So it to me it doesn't make sense. You don't want to read. Uh, yeah, I mean you don't want to study pieces without knowing and understanding the context and by reading this helps you to understand the context of 
for me, I guess, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be telling other people what to do, but I would just highly recommend reading the Bible first, getting a firm foundation, an understanding of what is being talked about all throughout the Bible, and then when you start to do your study, put you can start to connect the dots and start putting the pieces together. Right? And you just got it takes patience, but learn from the Bible, don't learn from teachers when it comes to studying in my opinion and the, the reason I say that is because I've been deceived for so much of my life that I'm just not gonna take it anymore I wanna know what the Bible says and so like when I'm uh, teaching others I want to um, have my focus on hey read the Bible all right it's not listen to me it's read the Bible and to me there's a there's a complete difference between the two and because I see this from a lot of people they try to force their doctrines and ignore the Bible and I'm in the next video I'll, I'll get into that and oh same person there's more to denying Jesus than what Peter did. If you call yourself Christian and live contrary to God's word or law, you have denied Jesus. Okay. Uh, well, in the context of what I shared for you, um, Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. So the context here is unsaved people. I already I already went over that. So there's more to deny if you call yourself Christian and live contrary to God's words, well, or law. So when you put God's word or law, <clears throat> the law is. God's word. Yeah, there's really no separation there. But if you are a Christian, you're not going to be perfect. Just like Peter, he wanted so much to get the Lord's approval. He wanted to do what's right. He wanted it desperately, and I think that's what we all want. We want to show ourselves approved but we're gonna fall we're gonna fail we're gonna trip we're gonna make mistakes and that's because we're not perfect we're not God if we could be perfect we wouldn't need a sa a savior right the whole reason why we need a savior the whole reason why we've called out to the Lord Jesus Christ to save us is because we are not perfect. We know we're not perfect. We can't do it by ourselves. We need a helper. We need a savior. And the good news is we have one. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so this this idea that you could just be perfect nullifies the word of God. It nullifies the law of Moses. It nullifies the death, burial, resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ it denies everything that he did it rejects and makes vain everything that Jesus has done to suggest that you can be perfect you can't be perfect that's why we need a Savior we recognize that we realize that and so the, I, what I see is a lot of the unsafe people are saying, well, oh, you're just using that as an excuse to go on sin. And well, the problem is you, my accuser, also sin. And I know it. And God knows it. And you know it. You're not fooling me. You might be fooling yourself, but you're not fooling God, right? You're a sinner just like me. You're not perfect just like me. And this idea that we can be perfect is... Um, just utter deceit because we can't be that's why we need a savior if we could be we wouldn't need a savior 
we can't because we're in this flesh and we're going to have uh, these struggles until the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven. So this is where our hope is. And then um, when Jesus comes, he's going to make everything new. And it just doesn't make any sense to suggest, oh, well, if you break the law, you're going to hell. Well, that's something that the devil would say, right? It's true, you ought not to ever break the law. Whether you're saved or unsaved, it's always wrong to break the law. And that's what Moses is pointing out, what the law is and what sin is. And we're not saved by the law. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Jesus Christ. And once faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So we're now we have the Lord Jesus living in us. We are a new creature. We have the Spirit of God in us, and we can never die. And not because of ourselves, right? It's because of God, because what Jesus has done for us. All right, not, not because we have any good works in us. The only good work in us is Jesus. All right, so, and once saved, always safe is satanic teaching. Yeah, so the idea that you can be secure and have peace in the Lord Jesus Christ and have put your rest and faith and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's satanic, according to Iske. So, uh, so his standard is that you got to be perfect and never make one single mistake. If you do, you're damned to hell forever. Well, that's true, except Jesus Christ offered his body that we should be forgiven of our debt. So we are freed from our debt forever. He paid it once for all. So he's already paid that debt. Right? So it's true that if you do sin, you're damned forever. But good news is we have somebody who paid the price, paid the penalty, and he paid for our soul. All right? And so, it, it's okay. If you're thinking that you're perfect, you're not fooling me. You're not fooling God. It's hard for me to believe that you got yourself fooled. You know you're not perfect. You pre you might pretend to be perfect, but you're not perfect. You're, if you were perfect, you'd be God. Believe me, you're not God. People, no, there is no such thing. Whosoever shall believe in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How can you have everlasting life and not uh, and die? How can you have everlasting life and lose it? If you could lose everlasting life, it wouldn't be everlasting life. Right? He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Well, we have it right now. This is not something that's coming later. We have everlasting life right now. We that are saved. So if you don't have it right now, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. And your only hope is to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to stop trusting yourself because, look, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. And that's what we that are saved realize and recognize that we need a Savior. And you need a Savior. People who perished in Noah's day were once children of God till they sank deep in the pool of sin and couldn't take heed to God's word. So 
That's interesting that you bring that up. So we go to Hebrews 11. And we talk about Noah um, when he built the ark, the boat that was going to get everybody and his family out of that wicked world. Uh, God delivered them. Uh, oh, how'd I do that? Interesting. Okay. Where am I at here? There we go. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and, become, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's always been about faith. All right. Now, that's point number one. Point number two, till they sank deep in the pool of sin. Ooh, buddy. The pool of sin. That's kind of cool, huh? Pool of sin. Except, see if I can find it. Oh, I don't know if I can find it. I can't find nothing in the Bible. Put myself on the spot like this. Um, 4 and 4. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Hmm. You're not under the law, but under grace, dummies. He, has any, you know, talk about. Did anybody read the Bible anymore? We're not under law. Shall we sin then because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Now look, just read the Bible, guys. I mean, come on. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So, I guess the point that I'm making here is the law of Moses came after the flood of Noah. All right, and so if you understand that, hey, the, without the law, there is no knowledge of sin. All right, that's kind of what, if I could summarize simply, that's the point that I want to make here, that there was no law of Moses. There was no knowledge of sin in the days before the flood. All right, the law of Moses came well after the flood of Noah. All right, and so these guys before the flood had every opportunity that could that they could possibly ask for to be able to do it on their own, and they screwed it up big time they were given the opportunity to live hundreds of years I mean more imagine imagine the possibilities if your life expectancy was 900 years wow man you would have this we we would all have this tremendous opportunity to figure out how to save ourselves and and to have everlasting life and to live perfect lives forever and ever and they couldn't do it they screwed it up and they went crazy and they made, they made a muck of the whole world that's proof that's evidence that man, we can't do it on our own we need a savior we're gonna if if we could lose our salvation we would we'd screw it up it's this example after example after example after example going back even to the Garden of Eden Adam and Eve look at they had the opportunity given to them and what happened I, they basically were given one rule don't eat the chocolate chip cookies on the kitchen counter or excuse me don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of the good of good and evil and they did they did it they screwed it up and now all these people are given the opportunity to live in nearly a thousand years to get it right and they couldn't get it right they screwed it up 
And so, I mean, it, there's just example. We go on, on all throughout the New Testament, man. And even till today, people are screwing it up. The good news is we have a Savior who was perfect, who was who knew no sin, and and if um, excuse me, and if we believe in Him, we shall have everlasting life. Not because of what we did; we can't do it. It's because of what God has done for us. Okay. So Michael Brown says, we are all Bible reading Christians. We don't go after our brothers and sisters in Christ. It gives us a bad name. So take heed on who you spread the word to. Well, I, I would say, now hold on a second now. Let's just clarify a couple things, or at least one thing. Michael Brown says, take heed to who you preach the gospel to. Jesus says, the gospel must first be published among all nations. So there's there's a little uncertainty into what you're saying there, Michael. And so you should be careful of exactly what you're saying. So what I'm saying is preach the gospel to everybody. Everybody. Sinners and, uh, you know, those people that never sin, apparently. Preach the gospel to everybody, right? Um, the poor and the rich, every. But everybody needs the gospel. There's nobody that can get a, get by without the gospel. So preach it to everybody. Now you can't change anybody, and you can't save anybody. And I hear this quite often. People think that they're going out and saving souls. No, you can't save one single soul. You can't even save your own soul. And so, what we can do is plant the seeds of truth and trust God that these uh, that the truth will um, manifest itself if you will in those who desire the truth All right. and then knowledge is power exactly people think living righteous is something they don't have to do oh here we go I know where this is going they think they can just do what thou will like Aleister Crowley will somehow get them to God. Even Crowley hated the law. That's why a lot of Satanists liked him. Yeah. So, we are not in bondage to the law, we that are saved. But knowledge is power is trying to put people back under the law and saying that you can't be saved if you break the law. All right, it, it, again, this goes back to what I was just showing you earlier. Um, and what Paul talks about, look, just because we're not under the law doesn't mean we can sin willy-nilly. And I don't, I've yet to see anybody teaching this idea that, okay, you're saved, you can go sin willy-nilly, it's okay. It's not okay. It's never okay to sin whether you're saved or unsaved. And we that are saved recognize that it's wrong to sin. Otherwise, we would have never known to need a Savior. But because we know it's wrong to sin, and because we know we can't live life without sinning, we recognize, realize we need a Savior. And the good news is we have a Savior. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So this whole thing about people believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, once saved, always saved, this idea that they can go sin and willing, hey, we can just sin, sin, sin. No, I, I don't know anybody that says that. The only people that say that are people that are preaching against the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only people. And just because you got a million people saying it doesn't make it true. You know, you got a million unsaved people teaching against the gospel of Christ. And look, I'll, I'll probably make another video, but uh, on this particular subject, these people that preach against the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are teaching that, well, if you do more good than evil, you're going to be saved. And uh, you're in big trouble. That's what you believe. All right. And I'll show that later. All right. So I guess that's it. 
I ranted and rambled and mumbled and jumbled it for long enough. That's good enough. Thank you for the comments. Keep them coming up. If you want to continue this conversation, I appreciate it. I encourage it. Man, it's good to talk about stuff. It's good to think about stuff. It's good to have dialogue. It's all good.